we have a lot of dishes on the menu at Ibaldi Ristorante, but there are some dishes and recipes that have been there since the very beginning because people come for those. They're staple items. Not only have there been dishes that people love to come and eat on a regular basis and would freak out if we took them off the menu, but they're dishes that also represent much more. They represent history, tradition, well thought process. And the dish that we're gonna talk about today is exactly one of those dishes. It's what I call a uniter dish. The Dover sauce with lemon sauce. Part of me says, is it really that good? And why people like it so much? But then again, I think that anything that's fried is kind of good, right? Like you have chicken nuggets, you have all these French fries. Anything that you dip in a fryer, it will taste better. Not as healthy, but it tastes better. But the Dover sole is pan fried and it has this delicious lemon sauce, which is so basic. But what's so beautiful about it is that number one, it's been around for so long. Like so many people have done it and have their, you know, the French do it, the Italians do it, the American do kind of fried fish. So it's always been around except, you know, you do your own take. And I think that we've been successful in taking a simple piece of fish, pan frying it, adding the simple sauce. It's those two or three ingredients which really represent what my cooking is all about, simplicity. And this Dover sole is just that. It's a dish that people go crazy over. And when there's not available, it's not a pretty sight. So the first time I met Ido, we were recording our second album, Life is Peachy. And it was probably in like 1996. We were touring for 18 months on our first album. And I remember our record company's like, you guys got to go back in the studio and start a second record because you guys are hot right now. You know, just that record executive kind of like, it's hot. You guys got to get another record in the can. So we went back to this place, which is in Malibu. It's burned down now, but it's a famous studio called Indigo Ranch Studios. We were there and we needed to get a, a new agent. And our manager at the time uh, told us, we're going to go to this Italian restaurant. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's got the best food in town. And, you know, it's funny because none of that shit mattered to us at the time. All we cared about is, do they have beer? You know, it's amazing pastas and... Okay, but did they have beer? And we kept saying that, and our manager's like, yes, they have beer. Okay, well, we're gonna bring our own just in case. It was during lunch one day, and I remember going there to the restaurant, nice entrance, and it was like, it was probably the nicest Italian restaurant we'd ever been to. It was the manager, which I had known for a very long time already, who used to come and eat all the time, loved the restaurant. And then these guys that were, you know, all tattooed up and dreadlocks and had a little bit of makeup on, looked really scary, but I knew right away they were rock stars. And it was like one after the other walking in the restaurant and they all sat down. I remember we sat down in this little private room off to the side and Ido came in to, to say hello or greet us and welcome us. So, you know, I hadn't seen James for a long time after that. They became very successful. I mean, they exploded. And I remember through the same manager that brought them there, I was able to even go see them in concert, which they were amazing. So I opened Ibaldi in 2006, but James didn't come for many years. About 10 years ago, when my wife and I discovered this restaurant in Beverly Hills called Ibaldi, we just were like, this food is amazing. And it's funny because I never told this to James, but the waiters used to come to me and say, oh, the guy from Metallica is here. And I was like, what do you mean, really? So I looked. I was like, that's not a guy from Metallica. That's a guy from Korn. And I said, oh my God, I remember James like from Malibu. One of the servers said the, uh, the chef would like to say hello. And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I went to say hi at the table and he said, sit down. I couldn't believe it had been so long. And I remember him telling me, you know, he met us back then and he told us, hey, I know that you guys, these guys are gonna be famous. I know they're gonna be you know, a big deal. And it was kind of flattering to think that people saw that, you know, because you're so oblivious 
and you're so in your own ego and driven kind of mind that you don't look around. You just look at the path. You see from afar this rocker guy that you think is crazy and wild. And James is the opposite. He's like a big teddy bear, you know? He's so kind and he's a family man. Like, he talks about his children and how much he loves them. It's funny how, like, your perception of somebody is very different when you get to meet them. Dover Soul, delicious to eat and beautiful to look at. It's almost perfectly oval. It's a funky fish because it has its eye on the right side of its body and the mouth on the left. A lot of people believe, including myself, used to believe that Dover Soul comes from the Dover city in England. But the reality is no Dover Soul comes from Dover. The reason it got its name is because fishermen from Dover headed out from the English Channel, from Belgium coast, to the Netherlands and also from the Bay of Biscay where the most prized Dover sole comes from. And if someone says, oh, I have a Dover sole from here, local, it's not Dover sole, it's flounder. So you have a skinless fillet of Dover sole. Very important is you pat dry the fish. You don't want it to be too moist because otherwise when you're tossing it into the flour, it will create a clumpy texture when you're frying it and you don't want that. You toss it in flour. You have to make sure that the fillet doesn't sit there for very long with flour on it because otherwise you will not get a nice crispy golden texture to it when you're frying and then you kind of spank it and release the excess flour from the filet. At this point, you need a non-stick pan with a blend of oils, canola and extra virgin. You want to make sure you have a blend because you don't want the oil to be too heavy as extra virgin olive oil is for frying. You need something light. And I've always found that a blend works the best. Make sure that it's nice and hot and then you toss your filet of Dover sole in it. Another very important tip, you cook it on one side and then you flip it once it's golden and you cook it on the other side. Don't go back and forth, just wait, be patient, let it get a nice golden color and then you flip it and get another nice golden color on the other side. When you achieve this, you take the filet out, you put it on a plate, you add unsalted butter, lemon juice, make sure that the lemon juice is always freshly squeezed and you make a fondue out of this, right? You make a nice creamy sauce. If it looks a little watery, add a little more of unsalted butter, salt, pepper. You add the fish to the sauce once you achieve the creaminess of the sauce. And very important, is the chopped Italian parsley. You have it chopped already on the side. Parsley has a tendency to really get dark fast in a hot liquid and it will not look beautiful and pleasing and it kind of loses its flavor as well. So to have it freshly chopped on top of the fish and the sauce will give you the best result to really make a very complete dish. The way he prepares it the way that Ito approaches sauce in general, he's such a master at that because it's so simple. And I love that the lemon with the butter, the balance is perfect. Thank you, Dover Soul. Thank you, Dover Soul, so much for being so yummy and tasty that you've brought James into my life. I remember my wife ordered it the first time. She's like, you gotta try this. So I was like, eh, you know, this fish, you know, what are you gonna, and I was blown away. Every time we go there now, we have to order it. Incredible guitarist from an incredible band, a band that had 
transform music as we know it also. And yet, when we're eating together, who is really the star? The star is the fish, right? It's the Dover Soul. When we were up on his rooftop and his studio, we were eating Dover Soul. And we weren't thinking about, oh, you're famous. Who do you know? Who do I know? No. It was all about, wow, this fish is really good. With a musician and a chef, you think like, how could these two people have anything in common? You know, the creativity, the crazy, just pulling ideas out of, you know, the ether and like, oh, I'm gonna put that ingredient. And that, it's a lot like songwriting. It's a lot like creating music and you gotta please these people, but you're gonna make it how you wanna do it too. Nobody can tell Ido how to make something. And same with us. Nobody's gonna tell us, <laughs> record companies have tried, but nobody tells us how to write music. We do it to our liking, to our taste. You know, one little ingredient with one little note, one little thing can be tweaked to make it your own and to make it a make or break kind of dish or song. So I think there's a lot of similarities. It's so funny because you know, James, once we, we became friends, he's always invited me to concerts. He's like, oh, you should come. Which is what I've always wanted to do is go backstage. And I haven't even been able to do it. I always say, it's like a running joke. James, are you playing on a Sunday or Monday? Because those are the only days I can go because the other days I'm occupied with the restaurant. He never plays on Sundays and Mondays. So I hope one day I can join you backstage and share not only my passion that I share with you at the restaurant all the time, but you can share with me your passion of music. And afterwards, we can have a Dover Soul backstage together. <laughs>